morning, and welcome back to our applique and thread art quilt project. Today is all about thread painting, one of the most enjoyable parts of making this quilt. I've got my tea and my tools, so let's get started. Before stitching, I sandwiched the quilt using a fusible batting, but you could also use temporary spray adhesive. I'm also going to thread baste around the different sections of the quilt to stabilize them, especially the central panel. While I'm setting up, I should mention that I'm using a free motion foot with a full ring. If you use one with an open ring like I like to use for a lot of my stitching, the long basting stitch can sometimes catch on it. Also, make sure you have the foot raised when you thread the machine. Here, I forgot, and you can see the mess it made. I re-threaded with the foot up, and you can see I got nice, beautiful stitching, both on the back and on the front. For the basting itself, I'm stitching on the red areas with a contrasting thread so I can find it later easily to take it out. I'm using the basting stitch on my Q20 with the stitch regulator set on BSR3 with a half inch stitch. That's probably overkill, but it makes it easy and foolproof. A lot of machines now, and I think all Berninas, have a basting stitch you can use. But if not, you can really just use your longest straight stitch. That's enough about basting. Let's get started with our thread painting. To help choose thread colors for the actual thread art, I made a small test sandwich with the same backing, the same batting, the same top, and some scraps of the applique fabrics. For this first round of stitching, you want thread colors that fit with each applique. You may not want a lot of contrast here. Most of these lines will be subtle details on your quilt, not bold lines that catch your eye from a distance. I chose 40 weight polyester embroidery and quilting threads with a 9014 needle. You could also use cotton here, but I find polyester leaves less fluff in my machine. I changed to the Bernina 73 foot, which has an open spot on the ring so I can see the stitching better. It works both on my Q20 and also my other Berninas. Most domestic machines let you adjust the presser bar pressure, and you'll want to set that a little lighter for this. The Q20 doesn't, but the 73 foot lets me adjust it on the foot itself with a really fine degree of control. You want it so the foot is close to the surface of the quilt, but the quilt moves freely and doesn't drag. I'm also going to use my Bernina gripper ring to guide the movement, or you could use quilter gloves if you want. Just follow the lines we marked on our applique using the super sticky Fabrisolvi. I have my stitch regulator set to BSR1, with 12 stitches per inch, and the idling speed set at 220. Some machines call that the cruise speed. Treat all lines more or less equally. You may have to backtrack a little, but mainly you just need to get a single line stitch down. We'll go back over the main lines of the design that we want to pop with bolder threads later.
When I got to the tails of the birds, I used the same thread I used with the applique just to trace a guideline I can work with later. I don't expect it will actually show in the final quilt. With the first trace of the lines on the appliques done, we need to work on the ferns and the ribbons that get stitched directly on the background fabric. Let's talk a bit more about picking threads for this project. Sometimes I find making a stitch sampler like this one can help, particularly for picking specialty threads like the ones we'll be using next. I stitch test samples of different threads with different stitch patterns so I can compare how they look on a neutral background. It's a handy studio reference for choosing stitches too, and there's more to it, but I'll talk about that in a future video. Besides selecting the right colors, I also want to choose threads that have the right sheen for a project. Cotton or wool threads are pretty matte, and that's not what I want here. For the main lines of the thread to stand out more, I'm going to use heavy 12 weight rayons. Most of these are in Wonderfill's accent series that have more shine to them. For the ferns, I chose a variegated color called green foliage that really gives them an organic look. I'm still sticking with 60 weight bottom line from Superior for the bobbin. Stitch the ferns out from the central stems and then back again as if the ferns were evergreen leaves. Except for the stem, I'm not trying to trace the lines. I'm using them like boxes that bound the areas where the fern leaves should go. For the ribbons, I'm using Wonderfill's Glamour thread, which has two rayon strands and one metallic strand. That can make it more breakable, so you have to be careful with it and work slowly, but I managed to do all of this section without breaking it once. Most rayons really need a thread lubricant like a silicone thread treatment but it's particularly important with metallic thread. I'm still using my Bernina gripper ring to guide the stitching. Martelli makes one too, and I tried both when I went to Road to California in 2020. The Martelli has a flat spot to let you get it under the sewing foot rather than this opening in the front, but I find the opening easier to use. I started using a top stitch with 1.75 tension, with my stitch regulator set at 10 stitches per inch and an idling speed of 200. Here I had my first thread break. So I'm going to turn the tension down even more. You want to go over the lines at least three times with the metallic thread. Build up the line and smooth out the curve as you go back and forth. You can't go very fast at all. The design shows some circles next to the ribbons, and you may want to stitch those too. I skipped them in this case because I wasn't sure if they would get in the way of what I would want to do with the quilting later. 
After you dissolve the stabilizer with the printed markings, it's time to strengthen the major lines of the design. In some places, I used heavier threads with colors similar to those I picked earlier, and in some places, I wanted more contrast. For example, you can often see veins and leaves, and the variegated green and gold color I used on the ferns should work well for them. The yellow part of the variegated thread stands out in particular on this applique and gives it a good look. A dental floss loop helps me get this heavy thread through the needle. I'm also using this as an opportunity to fix some places where I didn't have the stabilizer with the printed designs lined up perfectly with the applique. I'm filling some of the gaps by making the threads thicker. I also went back to working on the bird's tails with 12 weight rayon. At this point, I'm trying to really fill in the feathers of the tails using approximately the same technique I used with the ferns. The light stitches I made earlier gave me the guidelines I needed to give the tails the right shape.
I hope you've enjoyed today's segment on thread painting our project as much as I have. Don't forget to subscribe. And if you're enjoying this project, I'd be grateful if you can hit the like button too. As always, if you have any questions or comments, please post them below and I'll try to get back to you as soon as possible. When we get back together next time, we'll work on the rest of our quilting in both the center panel and the borders, and our project will really take shape. Until then, have fun in your studios. Bye for now.